Hey guys, it's Kevin with Mix Coach. Now, earlier this week, I had a client to send me a song, and it happened to be in GarageBand. I wanted to walk you through the process of me exporting these tracks, and so let's go. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is do a Save As. I've actually already done a Save As, but when you're in GarageBand, just go to File, hit Save As, and I did Export To. That way, you always have a Plan B, and you can go back to the previous version with no harm, no foul. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is do a save as. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the master track here, and you're gonna to wanna to bypass everything because I don't necessarily want any of the effects that he had because I'm gonna be adding my own, right? So another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to take the master track and make it zero dB. So I just double click, hit zero, and now we're good to go. That's the only time you're gonna to have to do that to take care of the master track. Now you're gonna to wanna to hit track and go back to each individual track and bypass the, the effects on that. So if we go to this lead vocal track and you go to controls, you'll notice that all of these have already been bypassed. I've already bypassed these. You just hit the power button and everything is off. Turn the master echo, master reverb off. You are good to go on that, except for you wanna make this zero dB also. Uh, if you wanna do that on each of an individual track as you go, you can. I typically just go ahead and, and set everything at zero. So you can do that on each individual track as you go, okay? Uh, I'm gonna show you something a little bit different than what I did on the background vocals a little later. Okay, so on the piano, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Actually, let's go back to the lead vocal. So now what we're gonna do is select, if you don't have this bar up here at the top, uh, you'll want to select the whole song. Make sure that it starts back at, you wanna make sure that it wanna starts back at measure one and you wanna extend it through uh, this here, uh, through the end of the last um, piece of music, okay? Now that you've got your track selected, your all the effects off of it, volumes at zero, everything off the master, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to solo this track. Because the only way to get stuff out of GarageBand, to my knowledge, is to individually bounce each track out. So that's the reason for this tutorial, right? Okay, so now that we're soloed, what we're gonna do is hit share, hit export song to disc, we want to select WAV file or AIF, whatever you want to export it. I would, I would keep it within these two. And then either 24-bit or 16-bit. I'm going to choose 24-bit. One other thing you want to do is let's create a new folder and call it uh, Love and Be Loved. Um, track Stems. And let's hit that. That way, all of our files are going to one central folder. And then when we go to import those later, they'll be in one folder. We won't have to look for them. Also, we're going to want to name this track, whatever the track is. So we'll call this lead vocal. And we should be ready to go. Okay, so we'll hit export. It should export that in faster than real time. But it still takes a little time if you've got a lot of tracks. Okay, so there's no quick way to do it. You'll just need to, to go about that uh, in the most timely manner you can. Here's one thing that I did a little bit differently though. This is a drum track here. So we're gonna solo this drum track. And if you notice, this is a multi, this is a drum track, but you've got individual things that you can solo or turn up and down. So it's like a, basically this track becomes a submix of this. So what I did was I turned all of the tracks off and just left the kick and then I would solo this and then I would export share export to disk and I would just call it kick hit export I did that with every every individual drum I did a passive kick a passive snare a toms hi-hat cymbals and percussion now I just left all of the compression on because I figured that if I was tracking it to tape as long as it sounds good it is good um, so I just left everything else on. You can use that at your discretion, okay? So you can balance individual tracks out this way. Now, on the background vocals, what I did, I didn't export every individual background vocal. If you notice, it says background vocal one, two, and three. I did those as one pass. I did background vocal one to the left, 
um, the second pass to the right and, uh, and this to the center, or you know, you can uh, adjust accordingly. But I listened to the tracks and these three tracks are singing the same part. It's like a, a double and then a triple. So it's three of the same vocal part on three different tracks. So I didn't bother tuning it. I just exported it as a stereo track. So let's do that real quick. So let's run this up to zero. Um, and I will, I will tell you this one thing. When, once I run these up to zero, I will tell you that these tracks became really hot. Three uh, well-recorded uh, tracks that are recorded at a healthy level, they did seem a little loud, and I had to back them down quite a bit. So anytime you multi-track um, things, I usually bring it down. I usually bring it down probably 3.5 to 4 dB. So I'm just going to do these at minus 4. Minus 4. Now these are ready to print. So let's print these real quick, see how they sound. It'll be at a better level. So just keep in mind that if you're bouncing multiple tracks to a stereo track, you may want to just look at the levels. Uh, one thing we could do is just play this and make sure that the master meter is still showing a good level here and then adjust accordingly and chances are since all of these were recorded looks like at the same time you could adjust all of these individually the same way okay that's about it uh, it's a little tedious to do this but the track sounded fine and uh, next week i'll show you a little bit of my session in reaper okay hey thanks for watching today hopefully you found this helpful um, i have a mixing checklist that i'm glad for you to check out it's at mixcoach.com forward slash checklist and i will show you my seven step mixing checklist that i think you'll find really helpful okay thanks for watching today like and subscribe subscribe to the channel it really helps me out, and uh, I will see you soon. Thanks.